Hey, I'm Bruce Naylor, your Boomer Consumer, and this video is going to be a fun one, I think. Uh, it's long, long overdue. And that is my take on the Apple HomePod second generation smart speaker. So, um, interesting story. Apple reached out to me months ago and asked me if I'd be interested in auditioning these. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm really more of a audio, audio file type of channel, so... I'm very much into things that produce excellent sound quality at an affordable price. They said, look, Bruce, let us send them to you and uh, just take your time and and make your, your video. And that's what they did. They sent me a pair of these home targets because in our conversations, I said, you know, um, I do own a HomePod Mini. I said, however, as I understand it, if you want to get the best sound, the best audio experience with HomePod, you should get two, which puts you in a price of approximately $600. So I thought long and hard about how I would do this video. This is not a review of the HomePod, okay? This is not a review because there's plenty of those. People go over the specs and features and all that kind of stuff. But rather, it would make this video from the approach of somebody that really digs great sound. And, of course, convenience. I mean, why not? That's great. And take it from that point of view, that perspective. What could I expect out of two of these 6.6 inch tall by 5.6 inch wide and 5.16 pound smart speakers that come with a four inch woofer, five horn loaded beam forming tweeters with DSP and computational audio, all that kind of cool stuff. How would it actually sound listening very intently very detailed to music, both stereo and spatial audio, basically Apple's term for Dolby Atmos audio. How would it sound to me? Well, let's just talk about the setup process. You know, first off, if you're an Android user, you got Windows computers and all that kind of stuff, Apple's really not marketing this to you. You really do need to have an Apple device, at a very minimum, at least an iPhone or an iPad of some sort. And you need that in order to set it up. Because as soon as you plug it in, it comes to life. My phone, for example, you got to pop up right on the screen to finish setup of the HomePod. Couldn't be, <laughs> really couldn't be any more simple. Now, um, apparently what this thing does when you plug it in, uh, it uh, kind of determines its location and makes adjustments to the audio. And as I understand it, uh, computational audio is constantly adjusting to give it, you know, the best bass and frequency response, all that that it's capable of. So as you move it around, it's always adjusting itself. Is that a cool feature? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, placement, though, is pretty important with these. Now, I've had this on several surfaces my, the desk I use for testing probably isn't the most ideal, so I moved to different locations. And I got the best sound quality out of a really thick table, really thick, heavy table. That's when I got, I think, the best sound quality, but that's not always possible for most of us. But they're small enough and I think attractive enough where, you know, like wife approval factor, whatever you want to call it, partner approval factor, uh, is not really an issue. I think they're yeah, pretty good looking, covered in cloth. It's a magnet for pet hair if you have a cat like I do. <laughs> yeah, I found myself actually using a roller on this thing. Uh, some of the things that I really like was handoff where I could be on my iPhone, select a track music, and then you just tap your phone right on the top there and the HomePod takes over. That's great. You really do, though, need to be in the Apple ecosystem to get the most out of the HomePod. If you're in this for sound, I definitely think you should consider to a one by itself. It sounds very, very good for a smart speaker and perfectly acceptable for background music, for example, and if you're not listening critically. But if you really want to get the full experience and you want to get great sound, and like I said, you're going to need two of these. Let's just talk about bass for just a minute. Uh, initially, I thought the, I mean, how powerful can a four-inch woofer be? Well, 
this thing is like really potent. And, uh, but I didn't really like the bass that came out of it uh, initially. I thought it was too thumpy as opposed to being fast and smooth and, and deep. I thought it was more, you know, that thump, thump, thump type of bass. And now there is a setting uh, in the home kit software that you can turn off or is called uh, reduce bass or bass reduction. And I enabled that. Uh, because I, you know, I fairly listen to music at a low level, and you would think that leaving the bass cranked up would be beneficial, but I didn't really care for it personally. I, I did the bass reduction, and I was much more pleased with the sound. Uh, I tested this using the Apple uh, music application with spatial audio tracks, and one track that I listened to was uh, from a um, Ethan Iverson, and it's a track called uh, Technically Acceptable. And that is a kind of a jazzy type of song, or I should say track. The bass was great on it. And here's what happens when you listen to Atmos on here. You will not necessarily hear things overhead per se. You won't necessarily hear things behind you. What happens is, say the sound stage is this wide, when you enable or listen to a Atmos track, it's going to sound much wider and maybe a little bit taller. As you step away from the home pods, that begins to collapse. All right, but it is neat and it sounds really cool. I don't feel that it really took away from the listening experience all that much. I'm going to be testing this with an Apple TV 4K for Atmos movies and mixes, and that'll be another video that's coming up. But it definitely expands the sound stage in a, in a very great way. But I still found myself listening mostly to two-channel uh, audio mixes with the HomePod Gen 2. Now, as far as, you know, some of the technical details... I've tried to find out as much information as I could, like the tweeter size or how many watts per channel these things put out. Couldn't really find anything that substantiated what I believe. One measurement that I believe is accurate is, hey, what's the frequency response? 33 hertz to 19 kilohertz. But one of the downfalls, uh, instead of maybe using something that has the ability to adjust the audio like an EQ or para, a parametric EQ, there is none. What you get is what you get out of here. Now, there's so there's no bass, there's no treble adjustments really for this. You live with what the sound that it makes. Now, a few tracks that I listen to uh, and is uh, Amy Winehouse's I, I Told You I Was Trouble I believe this was like a video special. You get it on DVD. Uh, I downloaded it digital format from Apple Music. I, I just love it. What a great, great singer Amy is. Here's what I think. The the I think that it the the I think the mids were a bit lean. You know what I mean by lean? I mean kind of scooped out. So rather than being forward, it's kind of pulled back a little bit. And I found that just about everything I listen to. And, and you know, mid-range is kind of where a lot of the music, the voice, and all that lives. It would be great to be able to, to bump that up just a little bit. But understand, when you're doing a two-way configuration, even with DSP and computational audio, those mids just seem to be a bit scooped out to me, and the highs seem to be just a little bit overly warm. And it didn't matter what, what music that I really listened to. Another uh, song uh, that I listened to was from the album, but seriously, folks, by Joe Walsh. Life's been good to me so far. Love that tune. That's just, is, if there's a song that says parte, <laughs> that would be one of them. Again, I felt that the mids were a bit scooped out on here. But the pace is was punchy. Now, remember, I had bass reduction turned on, and it was still punchy. But I just think that it wasn't as overwhelming with that turned off. Now, you may feel just the opposite. The highs were really, really bright. So, I think sound quality is generally very good. You know, it gets loud enough for a small room. This, is, By the way, I think these are more of a near-field 
type device. All right. I think this is what they're, they're, they're meant for more near field listening. Yeah. If you have a small room or what, you know, what have you, a bedroom, a home office, you know, a small den, small living room, these are going to be fine for music listening. Now we're not talking about with television and Dolby Atmos and all that. That's for a different video. I think they're probably not up to the job and certainly can't compare to a whole bunch of powered speakers or, uh, or using an app, you know, a dedicated amp and, and speakers. Rather, man, it's tough. Yes, they sound really good in a stereo pair. Yes, there are, it is not, in my opinion, an audiophile quality, but it's very, very good. I mean, it's really good. And I think Apple pretty much knocked it out of the park as far as this intended audience. Sometimes audio is good enough for 99% of the people out there, you know, uh, no knock to people that use like Sonos and other uh, such devices. But it, I don't really feel it's audio quality. Yeah, I think maybe in another generation or two, it just might be. It just might be. I don't know how much power this puts out. I, and if you know, put it down in the comments. I've seen somewhere between 20 to 48 watts roughly, depending on how loud you have it. Again, Apple's kind of tight-lipped about all the technical stuff that's going on inside of here. If you want the higher quality sound, you really do have to get two of these. You just do. Uh, it's, it's night and day. One by itself is okay. Sounds pretty good. Great for turning it on, keeping down low, and having background music going while you're cooking or cleaning or whatever you're doing. But if you really want to improve that, you need two of them. And that puts you around 600 bucks. And there's probably better. If you're really into high quality audio, your money's going to be better spent elsewhere. But, and this is the big but, here's the thing. You're also getting a smart speaker. And it has a lot of useful features. You know, I can get the temperature in the room, the humidity in the room. I can schedule reminders. I can do it. Again, this is not a review of the HomePod Gen 2. Either Siri, you either love it, don't like it, whatever, but <laughs> that is what you have. If you want to be in that Apple ecosystem, and if you want really good sound, and you're not super critical, that's the big point I'm trying to take here. If you're not super critical, then, yeah, this could make some sense. These could absolutely make some sense. They're quite pleasing to listen to. They're not tiring or fatiguing. The detail on them is pretty good for what they are. You, you shouldn't expect these things to sound like a $100,000 pair of speakers, but they get the job done. So as I said, ultimately, these are more of a lifestyle product that are designed for background music. They're not really meant for the audio file, but they do sound good. Spatial audio adds some height, uh, height, into the music, but doesn't necessarily bounce off the ceiling or wrap around you. It doesn't really work that way, but it sure does make the soundstage a lot wider and, and what's the word I'm looking for? Immersive. That's it. And I think that's the goal of spatial audio is to feel kind of immersed in music, but you do have to be more near field on there. Um, if you're just strictly looking for something to do the background music, right? I would uh, probably opt for two of the uh, the HomePod Minis. You get two of those for two-thirds the price of one of these. So, <laughs> you know, $600 is a lot of money to, to talk to people. But if you really want the best that Apple has to offer, then this is it, the HomePod Gen 2. And that is pretty much my, I don't know what you want to call this, just not a review, my opinion of the HomePod 2. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.